Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how to make a goat milk cold process soap. And this is the fourth goat milk formula in my goat milk series and it's also the final one for now. If you haven't had a chance to check out my other three goat milk videos that we just published last week and the week before, I hope that after you watch this one, you will head on over and check them out. We did a goat milk bubble bath, body lotion, and an anti-aging goat milk facial cream. All three of the previous recipes are now available on the Patreon campaign, all at the $5 level, along with hundreds of other recipes that you can access just for the $5 pledge. I'm going to go ahead and put the link to my campaign down in the description box below for you. And for today's formula, I'm going to go ahead and share it in the description box below. I'll be writing up a full detailed tutorial and step-by-step -step process along with percentages to publish on the campaign, but the base recipe will be listed in the description box below so you can read recreate this if you like. All right, let's make some beautiful goat milk cold process soap. All right, so we are making cold process soap, so it's very important that you are wearing protective clothing and also protective eyewear because your lye and your water solution are very caustic before you combine the fats and the oils with your lye and water and this turns into soap before it's all cured, it's very harsh and caustic and you don't wanna chemically burn your skin. So just make sure that you're wearing gloves, long sleeves, long pants, closed toed shoes, and also protective eyewear, which I'm gonna go ahead and put on right now. So in this little container is some goat milk powder. You guys have been seeing me use the powder now. Um, this is the fourth time I'm showing you with goat milk powder. And you can make, I did get my full cream goat milk powder from lotioncrafter.com. You can make goat milk soap out of goat milk ice cubes and make it into your goat milk and lye solution. And that will give you a full goat milk soap today. And I have videos on my YouTube channel here. I'll try to link them in the description box for you of how to go about making a goat milk with the goat milk ice cubes. But today I wanted to show with you how to make a cold process soap with all the benefits of goat milk using the powder. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and blend up our goat milk powder into our oils. You guys have seen me reconstitute this with water. Um, this time around, we're just gonna go ahead and add it into the oil phase here, and then we're gonna be blending it just until it's smooth. So in this bucket here, I have olive oil, palm oil, castor oil, cocoa butter, coconut oil, and sweet almond oil. So we're gonna be getting a bar with lots of good cleansing lather from that coconut oil. Cocoa butter is gonna give it a luxurious feeling, but also help the bar to um, be on the harder side. Castor oil it has great cleansing properties as well as contributes to a beautiful big lather. Palm oil is gonna help give you a creamy bar, but also help with the hardness. And olive oil and sweet almond oil are just very mild cleansers that are gonna con help contribute to bubbles, but they're not gonna give you those big bubbles like coconut oil. So we're just, we have a very balanced um, soap recipe with all of those beautiful oils. And now we're just gonna go ahead and blend up the goat milk powder. Okay. So once your goat milk powder is all blended up and you don't see any clumps of it in there, it's time to go ahead and combine your lye and water solution with the oils. Now, both my solutions are sitting right around 90 degrees. I usually typically will make my soap at room temperature, but I didn't prepare this in enough time to allow it to sit. So I'm gonna be careful not to over blend and accelerate my trace. So I'm just pouring in my lye and water solution. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring this soap to just a light emulsification. <laughs> now the goat milk powder is gonna give you a really nice and creamy decadent lather. Because it's full cream, it's also gonna be adding some fat to your soap, which just helps with that luxurious feeling. And goat milk is really, really good for its soothing 
properties and also it has lots of alpha hydroxy acids which gently exfoliate your skin and help to reveal like a youthful glow. Goat milk is a very popular additive to put in your soaps. So the benefit of using the goat milk powder versus the ice cubes is it's very simple. You don't have to wait for your ice cubes and you don't have to worry about scorching your milk. So I'm just bringing this to emulsification. All right, and we're about there now. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide up my batter. We're just gonna do a simple, beautiful, classic in the pot swirl for this design. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour off my accent color here. I'm just eyeballing it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my color and my fragrance. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add in a little bit of titanium dioxide to this side. Um, but I first, I think I wanna add in my pinks. I'm gonna be using a little bit of cantaloupe and also summer crush mica. These are both from Nurture Soap. I'm looking for kind of like a peachy pink color. The summer crush is gorgeous. Um, and I'm going to kind of balance out the pink hues in this with some of the cantaloupe. You could also just use uh, the Summer Crush with um, some Orange Vibrance Mica, a little bit of Orange Vibrance, that makes a really nice color as well. I'm gonna be balancing this out with a little bit of the Cantaloupe Mica. And then to this one, I'm gonna be adding in some Titanium Dioxide dispersed in water. Now I'm just going to give this a little mix by hand. Um, before we move on, I'm going to add in my fragrance oil. I absolutely love this fragrance oil. I've been using it um, for as long as I've been making soap. It's the Apricot Freesia from Brambleberry. And the, the name of it kind of makes it hard to understand what it smells like to me because to me, it's just a beautiful, beautiful fruit and floral mix. It's not too heavy on the apricot. It's like a perfect balance. Um, it's always been one of my favorites. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and just first just kind of mix by hand to get that fragrance and color mixed in. Okay. And then I'm going to lightly blend just to make sure I get everything nice and incorporated and get those colors to really pop. And that's about all. I just want to bring this to a very kind of light, maybe almost medium trace because I'm looking for some nice kind of flowy swirls in this soap versus kind of more chunky. And that's about it on this one. So all I'm gonna do, give that a little bit of a stir by hand. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the peachy color into my white from high up just to kind of break through and get down into that white and a couple different areas here and then kind of get the rest on top. And then I'm gonna 
take my spatula and just do one, I'm gonna go down deep and I'm gonna do one good stir, like that. And then we're ready to go ahead and pour. Now this is such an easy, simple design and in the pot swirl can get complicated if your soaps are two different textures, if your colors are two different textures. But as long as everything is the same texture, then you get a beautiful swirl. And then if you just don't move, if you don't move your container back and forth, back and forth while you're pouring, you just kind of keep it in the same spot. It gives you some really, really good swirls. When it gets to the end, you want to move it back and forth, but for the most part, you want to keep it in the same spot. So then you're just going to give it a little tap tap. And then I'm going to go ahead and texture the top just a little and I'll bring you back for that when it's ready. Okay, so I'm just going to use this little stainless steel teaspoon here to uh, go ahead and texture the top. Now, I want it to be not so stiff that it's hard to get the texture in it, but I want it stiff enough that it's gonna make a difference when I put the texture in it. So I've been testing it a little bit here and we're just gonna go ahead and put a little texture like this with the back of the teaspoon. Sometimes if you wait too long to put that texture on, it um, makes it look, I don't know, just kind of gives it a chunky, like, harsher look, I guess. So I'm just putting a little texture on it. And then if you like, you can just kind of go down the top and just flatten it out like that. The last thing I'm going to do to this beautiful creamy looking soap is just top it with some botanicals. So I'm going to use some red rose petals. I got these from Brambleberry. And again, if your soap here is too set up, your botanicals won't really stick nicely. So you want to make sure the soap is still sort of fluid. When you put the botanicals down, they'll stick a, a lot nicer. Sprinkled. And then I'm also going to go ahead and place some blue cornflower petals as well. Also from Brambleberry. I just think these are so beautiful. just to give it a little bit of an accent. I just think that looks so gorgeous. Such a beautiful springtime looking soap. And I've always thought goat milk soaps look really nice with uh, flowers. of 99% rubbing alcohol here. I'm going to go ahead and spritz the top of this just to kind of make sure the exposed areas don't get soda ash. All right. 
And there you have it. That is a beautiful goat milk soap. Cannot wait to see what the swirl on the inside looks like. So stay tuned. I'll be cutting this for you in about 24 hours. All right, we are back to go ahead and cut this beautiful goat milk cold process soap. I just love how the color turned out. Let's cut this open and see what the swirl looks like. So as a rule of thumb, when you're using botanicals on your soap, you wanna make sure that you flip the botanical side this way towards the front of your cutter because if you put it up like this and you drag the cutter down through the botanicals, it can leave gouges in your soap. So we're gonna go ahead and just go this way. And then as you can see, the botanicals are the last thing to be cut and they're falling out instead of dragging through. Okay. There we go. There's the first one. Got a pretty good swirl in there. So the fragrance oil you can see has caused a little bit of off-white color inside and that will become a little bit lighter in color as it cures. But overall, I think it's a very beautiful, kind of pastel looking swirl, which is what I was going for. Just a very wispy kind of pastel looking design. ahead and show you one more here I really like the swirl in this one it's very beautiful all right everybody that is how you make a beautiful goat's milk cold process soap. I hope you like this video. I hope you like this formula. If you do, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Please leave comments or questions below. That really means a lot to me. Subscribe to my channel and share this video with a friend. All right, everybody, catch you on the next video. Bye, keep shining.